Emmert International proudly presents the Hauling Job of the Year entry for the Specialized Carriers and Rigging Association. Emmert International was retained by a Japanese company to assist with the logistics and transportation for several vessels bound for a refinery in the state of Washington. The vessels were part of a clean fuels upgrade at the refinery and were being manufactured at various locations throughout the world. Emmert's scope of work included receiving the vessels at the Port of Seattle and transporting them to the refinery. Given the unusually large size of the vessels and the main FCC converter tower, the project required over 10 months of planning and coordination with various government agencies to successfully obtain the necessary permits. After an initial review of the project requirements, members from Emmert International traveled to Japan in order to meet with both the freight forwarding company and the engineering company. The details of the project were mutually agreed upon, and Emmert began the arduous task of obtaining the necessary permitting requirements to transport the vessels once they arrived in the United States. The bulk of the vessels were transported to the refinery directly from the Port of Seattle. However, Three of the vessels were so substantial in size they could not be transported over the existing roadways. As a result, Emmert would be required to receive these vessels directly from a heavy lift ship and position them onto a barge. Then, the intent was to barge the vessels to a beachhead, which was close in proximity to the refinery, and perform a roll-off operation. This process would reduce the amount of overland transportation and provide a feasible solution to moving the main FCC converter tower. A beachhead was identified at Cherry Point in Washington. This area would provide a suitable landing site and reduce the overland transportation to only four miles. Upon identifying an off-road site, Emmert finalized the trailer configurations that would handle the three large vessels for the roll-off and overland transportation. Emmert International configured a dolly and beam system to transport a riser and a silo vessel. The riser vessel was refractory line and therefore could not withstand any forces during the offloading and transportation process. If forces were imposed on the riser column, there was a high probability that the inside lining would be damaged. Six 70-ton Emmert International designed off-road dollies accompanied by concave walking beams provided the necessary stability for transporting the delicate riser unit. To accommodate the silo vessel, the same trailer configuration was also utilized. Emmert was able to set up each of the trailers ahead of time on the barge and receive each of the vessels directly onto the transport systems from the heavy lift ship. Since the main FCC converter tower weighed in excess of 1.5 million pounds, had a diameter of 36 feet, and an overall length of 175 feet, designing a transport system proved to be rather challenging. Emmert had to take into consideration barge deck loadings, maneuvering the vessel around 90 degree turns, and maintaining axle weight requirements. In order not to exceed the barge deck and ground loadings, Emmert International configured a two-part 38-line platform trailer system. The front of the vessel was placed on a 10-line single-wide platform trailer. Because the center of gravity was toward the bottom of the FCC converter tower, Emmert International utilized a 14-line double-wide platform trailer for the back of the vessel. To accommodate turning the trailers under the load of the two saddles, Emmert placed two 450-ton turning bolsters under each transport saddle. Both the front and rear portions of the trailer were powered by self-propelled trailer modules. This transport system would not only allow Emmert to accommodate the weight of the FCC converter tower, it would also provide the maneuverability to negotiate the challenging route. While performing the final calculations for the transportation systems, Emmert International was also in the process of obtaining the necessary permits required to land the barge at Cherry Point. This process included the interagency coordination for several governing bodies and the acquisition of transportation, shoreline, and joint aquatic resource permits. In total, the permitting process required the coordination of more than 25 different agencies and spanned over an eight-month period. Underwater flora and migratory patterns of endangered fish species were of paramount concern to the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Migratory runs of the endangered fish and their eelgrass spawning beds are inherent in the Cherry Point coastline. As a result, 
a dive survey was required to identify the presence of any eelgrass beds within the area. In addition, time constraints were imposed for allowable barge landings to minimize the impact to the seasonal spawning for the endangered fish which occurred from March through June. Because Emmert did not receive the vessels on each barge until late in February, time was of the essence. The Department of Fish and Wildlife also required that the beach landings occur only during specified high tides. This requirement prevented the barge hull and any of the tug's prop wash from disturbing the eelgrass beds. Based on this premise, Emmert International planned their offloading schedule around the corresponding high tides above the 9-foot level. In addition to adhering to the tidal requirements, special considerations were necessary for the barge ramp design that would be used to transition the vessels off the barge and onto the roadway. This transitional barge ramp system would have to span 100 feet from the bow of the barge to the existing roadway. The shoreline permit stated that no excavation or pile driving would be allowed on the public beach. Therefore, Emmert International's barge ramp design would have to accommodate these criteria, withstand the rough seas inherent in the area, and support the extreme weight of the larger vessel. To meet these criteria, Emmert International designed a distribution platform along with an engineered three-tiered barge ramp system. Since the ramp was a temporary structure, Emmert International was only allowed to construct the ramp 48 hours prior to the barge landing. Part of the shoreline permit also addressed the impact of the beach area. Since the beach was available for public access, all driftwood had to be cataloged, removed, and replaced to existing conditions. Two days before the barge ramp system was to be constructed, Emmert commenced with the cataloging process. Unfortunately, 18 inches of snow fell on the shoreline the night before the cataloging process occurred. In order to photograph and catalog the driftwood, Trash pumps were utilized to spray seawater onto the snow-laden beach and melt the snow off the driftwood. After the snow was washed away, Emmert photographed the area and strategically placed the driftwood away from the barge landing area. Emmert International had now obtained approval for the barge ramp system and the necessary permits for all facets of the barge landing and transportation. It was now time to perform the barge offload sequence. To offload the FCC converter, the barge would be beached at high tide which occurred at 10.03 in the morning. Fortunately, the seas were calm and wind was minimal. These were ideal conditions for the barge landing. The tug positioned the barge off the shoreline at 9.30 and began to slowly bring the barge toward the beach. Within minutes of the high tide window, the barge was placed on the beach. Upon the beaching of the barge, a hydraulic crane was moved into position and the last set of barge ramps were placed on the third tier of the distribution platform and the bow of the barge. After securing the barge ramps, crews from Emmert International delashed the vessel and prepared to offload the vessel from the barge. The self-propelled platform trailers began to move the mammoth vessel toward the barge ramp system. Eight water distribution pumps would be utilized to fill up the front ballast tanks on the bow of the barge as the weight of the FCC converter was transferred on the barge ramp distribution platform. The ballasting procedure would ensure the stability of the barge and prevent the bow of the barge from shifting on the shoreline during the offload procedure. The first platform trailer section was moved onto the barge ramp and the FCC converter slowly moved toward the roadway. After transitioning the vessel onto the barge ramps, Emmert slowly maneuvered the converter onto the roadway. The roadway at the end of the barge ramp consisted of a sloping left-hand turn. Emmert's trailer operators skillfully maneuvered the vessel around the corner and off the barge ramp system. Emmert's goal now was to remove the barge from the shoreline before the tides fell below the 9-foot level. The hydraulic crane was repositioned and the last set of ramps were removed from the bow of the barge. By this point, the barge had been de-ballasted and the tug was able to remove it from the shoreline with ease. The first barge offload was executed flawlessly. Emmert was now ready to offload the riser and silo vessels. The next day had a corresponding tide window that was above the 9-foot level. As a result, Emmert was prepared to perform the same offload procedure the very next day. Again, the barge sailed to the Cherry Point site and was positioned for the barge landing. However, this time, inclement weather and rough seas forced the landing to be scrubbed. 
it was mutually agreed that any swells in excess of two feet would compromise the integrity of the barge landing and the offload procedure. Therefore, the barge sailed to the nearest port and stood down to ride out the storm. With an extension from the county, Emmert was able to leave the barge ramp system in place until the next corresponding high tide two days later. High seas battered Emmert's distribution platform for 48 hours. However, the barge ramp system remained intact. On the second day, Emmert was again ready for the second attempt to offload the riser and silo vessels. Fortunately, the seas were calm during the next high tide window and the second barge offload sequence commenced. The barge was beached and the ramps were put into position. Two prime movers were backed into position in front of the transport systems and the riser vessel was slowly offloaded. After clearing the barge ramps, the silo vessel was then moved off in the same fashion. The barge ramps were removed and the barge demobilized. The second offload sequence was executed flawlessly as well. After offloading the FCC converter tower, riser, and silo vessels, it was time to make the final journey to the refinery. Since the diameter of the main FCC converter tower was 36 feet, Emmert International obtained right-of-way permits in order to cut back the trees aligning the roadways. In addition, all of the power lines running parallel to the road were de-energized to prevent any arcing to the vessels during the transportation process. The first portion of the route consisted of a 90-degree turn which required improvements to accommodate the turning radius of the FCC converter. Three of the corners had to be excavated, backfilled with gravel, compacted, and covered with steel plating. The width of the load required the road to be widened and improved in many areas. A combination of compacted gravel, concrete eco-blocks, crane matting, and steel plating were utilized along the route to accommodate the turning radius of the FCC converter. Power, cable, and telephone companies dispatched bucket trucks to travel with the load during transportation. Because of the vessel's significant height, all wires and telephone lines along the route had to be dropped. After negotiating the first turn with the converter, it was transported two and a half miles to the Alcoa aluminum plant. The aluminum plant allowed Emmert International to transport the vessels through their property, which provided a direct route to the refinery. Since we would be working on the aluminum plant grounds, Emmert was required to take all the necessary training and safety classes to become an approved subcontractor for Alcoa. In addition to qualifying as a subcontractor, Emmert also had to make several improvements within the plant to accommodate the transport system for the FCC converter tower. A road was constructed to negotiate the crossing of the aluminum plant's wharf road. Topsoil was removed from a contoured field and geotech matting was installed to provide a sufficient base. Over the geotech matting, Emmert installed drainage pipes that were utilized to accommodate water runoff on the sloped hillside. More than 1,500 tons of gravel was placed in the newly constructed roadway. The fill was then compacted and plated with steel to provide sufficient support for the massive FCC converter tower. Upon successfully negotiating the aluminum plant's wharf road, Emmert transported the converter and the two other vessels into the Phillips Petroleum Refinery. To accommodate the weight of the FCC converter and turning radius of the transport system, the refinery excavated and improved an existing roadway at the north end of the plant. To accommodate a 90-degree turn, the refinery improved a 225-foot long by 40-foot wide area by removing over two feet of topsoil, backfilling, and compacting gravel. After negotiating the north end of the plant, the vessels were moved to the pick point for the refinery. Upon reaching its destination, Emmert International used the Goldhofer platform trailers to elevate the FCC converter and position it on temporary dunnage. The riser and the silo were removed from the Emmert transport equipment by crane. At this point, Emmert demobilized the transport system to a specified staging area and disassembled the equipment. A hydraulic crane was brought in and the equipment was loaded out and shipped. Upon shipping the equipment, Emmert demobilized the remaining personnel and the project was completed. Emmert International had moved nine over-dimensional vessels for the refinery upgrade and coordinated the movement of these vessels during a 10-month permitting process. Nine countries and more than 25 agencies were represented in the engineering, manufacturing, shipment, and transportation of the vessels.
Emert International was able to complete this challenging task with no incidents, no lost time or damage to equipment. Overall dimensions for the FCC converter. Length, 171 feet. Width, 36 feet. Height, 35 feet. Gross weight, 1.6 million pounds. Additional cargo, nine overdimensional pressure vessels and ancillary components. Planning the job, 10 month permitting process, 640 hours of engineering, 1,950 hours of planning and coordination. Permits, approval from over 25 agencies, county land use variance hearing, shoreline permit, transportation permits, physical elements encountered, 90 degree turns, removal of signage at railroad track crossings, traffic control devices, overhead wires, 4% grades, road width restrictions, snow, removal of telephone poles, cantilevering of road shoulders, tree trimming, rough seas, preservation of endangered fish and underwater plant life. Safety considerations, pilot cars, vessel offloads over water, life jackets, radio communication, police escorts, traffic control plans, plating over gas and oil pipelines, imposed restrictions for barge offload sea swells, certification of Alcoa plant safety program. Execution, 764 man hours, ingenuity and innovations, custom turntables, engineered barge ramp and platform distribution system, drainage system for new road construction, pre-construct transport systems on barge to receive peace directly from heavy lift ship, utilization of geotech fabric to ensure stability on new road construction, loss prevention, no accidents, no injuries, no property damage, no loss of time, no cargo damage, no incidents.